All right, I am going to review for you today the Nikon Coolpix L3, and I'm actually filming this on a digital camcorder, which has kind of got me freaking out a little bit because I'm so used to having my really amazing Sony camera to film these videos in 4K, but this just isn't gonna be one of those videos. So first of all, I ordered this camera I think I got it on eBay. I did get it on eBay. But you can find these on places like Mercari. Secondhand stores usually have these because they're not made anymore. But it is a Digicam. Those are popular these days. You've probably heard that term pop up a lot recently. I know I hear it everywhere. But what's cool about this one was this was my first ever digital camera. Not this one, of course, but this model. And I remember getting this as a Christmas gift. I actually went with my parents. I think Sears was the place that we bought it at the time because they had a huge digital camera display where you could pick out like the latest digital cameras. And this one was a good deal, so they got it for me. I think it was pricey at the time. I don't know, a couple hundred dollars, which is just a lot, but they really wanted to get me a digital camera and I'm so glad that they did because I mean, Look at this now, like I'm years, here I am years later obsessed with cameras. A lot of different cameras played into that, but this was definitely one. This was also my first YouTube camera, so I was able to create videos using this. They were terrible quality, they didn't look good, but some people that I knew watched them and that encouraged me to continue making videos. So this is just a video test using the Nikon Coolpix L3. So let's talk about the quality. It actually takes a really amazing photo, which is why I went with this. 5.1 megapixels. If you're looking for something to kind of challenge you, get yourself a Digicam, and I can't recommend this one enough. I love how compact and tiny it is. It's also got a very 2000s look to it with all that silver, but here's the best part. It takes AA batteries. If you've ever looked into getting a Digicam, you know how impossible it is to get batteries for some of these things. And it also just uses a regular SD card which is obviously pretty easy to get. Now, if you're watching this 20 years from now, who knows, that probably is an obsolete technology too. But yeah, it's very accessible. When I delved into the Digicam rabbit hole a few months ago, I bought a bunch of Digicams and I never used them. I just couldn't get into it and I'll tell you why, because one, I was so frustrated. I'd spent forever trying to find memory sticks for the Sony Digicams. They look amazing, they're beautiful cameras, but the batteries are not great. And the memory sticks are like impossible to find, so you have to do alternatives or pay a fortune for a secondhand memory stick. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, back to how accessible this is. It's also one of the more affordable Digicams that you'll find. I don't know as of filming this video what they cost because again, these things are extremely popular right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you why I personally love this. As someone who doesn't own a Leica camera, probably never will. Maybe someday, I don't know, I really hope that that does happen, but for the price of a used vehicle, I just, I don't know, they're, they're pricey. I wanted something that I could do some really cool looking black and white photography on, and here's what's neat. If you're wanting to see color pictures, I've got a few that I'll show you towards the end, but I really, really love this for black and white photography because it has it built in. So it does have some color profiles, they're nothing like you would expect from, like say, a, a, a Fuji X100 uh, series camera. They're nothing like that, but they are pretty neat. So I'll show you those really quickly. You go into your settings and you click on color options and you've got a few here to choose from. So you've got standard, vivid, black and white, sepia, and cyanotype, which black and white is what I shot on for the pictures that you're getting ready to look at. It's just so cool. And if you're wondering what I'm filming on, because you want kind of a, a retro vintage feel to your videos, I actually think this is a really good video camera. You can actually buy this new. You can buy this video camera new, and I'm not. I'm probably gonna do a whole separate video on it, but it is a Sony Handycam, and I love this thing, but I'll link it down in the description too. Um, so be sure to check out the links in the video description to get yourself a video camera like this. Again, very accessible. It charges up with really quick, fast charging, and it takes a micro SD card. Super easy and accessible, and that's what I like to see is this tech that's becoming retro tech be accessible. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what the Nikon Coolpix L3 can accomplish with black and white photos. I'm impressed. I love this little camera though because I have a lot of sentimental attachment to this model. But yeah, it's the Nikon Coolpix L3, so if you want to search that and get yourself one, mine's a little beat up because it came that way. 
But I kind of like that because I don't have to worry about keeping this in pristine condition. I can just have fun with this, toss it in a bag, and take it with me. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and you love film cameras, film photography, digital cameras, really just anything awesome. Check out these photos that you're about to see. They were all taken using this camera, and I'll see you guys later.